With the new release of Rails 5 comes a lot of new features, and a couple of these features and the next several videos, I really want to touch on some of the specifics on how you can really accomplish a lot more with Rails with this new update. So today will be an episode that will be a preface to Action Cable, and we will be discussing the Action Controller Renderer. This new feature has several benefits. We can use the Action Controller Renderer to render templates outside of and independently of our controllers. This can be very handy in keeping your code clean and readable. For example, if we have a JavaScript alert that notifies someone when they have not yet saved the changes on a page, we can override this default behavior and render a template instead. Before, you would basically have a string with HTML, and for a bootstrap model, this would be difficult to read or follow. However, using Action Controller Renderer, you would be able to render a partial which contains the model. Another and will be more popular way of using this feature would be to publish content to subscribers of an Action Cable channel. So to use this feature, you'll simply just call actioncontroller.render and then you'll pass in your template. And you can also use a bit of shorthand by calling something like orders controller and then now you have dot render and then you can pass in your action. And this will automatically know that you're working with your orders controller. So look for your index view in the orders directory. And you're not limited to just rendering a template. You can render your partials, actions, files, inline, plain, HTML, JSON, JS, or XML. So within our application, let's say we have our user model and we have a index action where we're listing out all of the users. And this will render a partial called user and will display the row for that user. So let's have a look at what it would look like if we were to render our index action. So I'm going to set the users to user.all, and then I'll just return the list of all of our users. We can then call the users controller, and we can call render, and then pass in our template. In this case, it's our index action. However, if you remember, we were looping through the all users, and in order to pass in the instance variable, we can use assigns. And we can then pass in what our instance variable would be, and then we can just set it to our users. And I like do call and squish at the end of this, and it will basically return just a single line stripping out any new line characters. So here you see that we now have the entire index render, but take note that it did also include the entire layout. So we can call our render again here, and this time we're going to just pass in the layout equals to false. And you'll see now we are just rendering the template, and it's not including all the headers and everything else. So let's say we want to call our first user and we want to render the partial for that user. And then we can call the users controller.render again. This time we're going to pass in the partial and select our user and then the locals so we can use our local variable of the user and we'll just set it to the one that we just assigned and call squish again. And you'll see that this successfully renders out our user partial and we didn't have to pass a layout false or anything here. And since your template will be rendered within a rack environment, which is accessible through the Action Controller Renderer environment, you can set it up in a couple of different ways. So we can look at what our defaults are on the Application Controller Renderer defaults. So you can see that we have a method of get, and we are able to change that to a post patch or whatever else that's needed. And so we can just set something like render equals to and then set the post for the method and then HTTPS true and then you call renderer dot render and then pass in like your partial and your locals or your assigns. And if you look at the source for the render method, you'll see that it is still calling the render to string, but now it's accessible to our application outside of our controller or our views. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. In our next episode, we're going to take a deeper dive and look into Action Cable and see how we can use it to create web sockets and a real-time communication between our clients and our back-end application. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.